Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final match, actually, of 2022 before we head into the new, se new the second half of the season for the new year. It's the number one team against the number two team playing tonight. It's Rikax Almira up against the François Tendamas Eredivisie team. We're going to do some introductions now. Playing number three for Almira, please welcome Ayuna Kateva. Number two, Dachmar from Italy. And playing number one, please welcome Danique Kirkert. And now for the home team, the Franzotte Damas Euro Divisi team, playing number three from Australia, please welcome Victoria Liao. Number two from the Netherlands, please welcome Suzanne Peters. And our number one tonight from the Czech Republic, please welcome Eva Fertikova. Our match referee tonight will be Tom Mikes.
Good evening everybody and welcome to the Frans Otten Stadium in Amsterdam where the numbers 1 and 2 of the Ladies Premier League will go head to head in a match that is just as spicy as it is important. Visitors Squash Almere, second in the league, club of the famous and infamous Tony Schwab will take on the unbeaten league leaders of Frans Otten Stadium managed by Chanel Erasmus. With me today is Irish wunderkind Scott Gillanders. My name is Daniel Lagwaard. I will be your host for this evening. Scott, welcome. How are you? Um, I'm good. I'm also the host. I'm not a. I'm not like the sub. Like, you know, I'm not. The, I'm not the. That part of my French, but <laughs> I'm not the subordinate here. Like, you're I, definitely not subordinate, Scott. But do you have any hi- idea why this match of tonight is so enormously spicy? I've heard a few stories, but to be honest, I've forgot the. the the details well you, you know best well let me explain glad you asked <laughs> first of all we have uh, the league leaders it's Frans Otten Stadium playing the number two of the league Squash Almere so it's uh, it's a match for the for the top position yeah. right before the winter stop yeah so you'll be winter champion of after you win today's match um, secondly on uh, the second position we have Susanna Peters playing uh, Dagmar Vermeulen and uh, Dagmar Vermeulen used to coach Susanna Peters for about three years. Oh, wow. Uh. Um, and even they played uh, together in uh, Four Squash Zwolle. But uh, Susanna Peters moved on first to Twente and now to Amsterdam to the big, the big city. Big Apple. And now on court, the, the third spicy ingredient is. Uh, uh, the Russian playing for uh, Squash Almere, Ayuna Kamta Eva. She, uh, last year she was about to play Franz Otten, but just before the registered deadline, she uh, switched to Almere. Yeah. Uh, Tra- a transfer drama. A very big transfer oh. drama. So uh, you can imagine that uh, stakes are high tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first ladies on court are uh, the, the mentioned uh, Ayuna Kantaeva and uh, our own Victoria Leal. And they both are kind of uh, unknown to, the int- to, to Squash, according to the internet. Okay. Victoria does not exist. Okay. She's a, a real dark horse. Yeah. Uh, she had some uh, great results, however, in the previous matches. And, um, well, I, I know Ayuna Kantaeva because she... She walks around here a lot, and she she walked around here a lot. And I know that she played some Eredivisie last year, but this year she does not seem to be playing competition at all. Okay. Uh, and um, well, she's she's a substitute for tonight for uh, Sanne Veldkamp, who is um, currently caught up in a PSA tournament in Sutton in England. Oh right, I thought I thought you were going to say there's a Sutton in Ireland as well. Like, I uh, thought she was in be. Ireland. No, it's not. It's not. I'd, I'd highly doubt it. Uh, but anyway, well, uh, good luck to Sana if she's watching. Um, yeah, well, Sana has, uh, has joined us uh, here in the commentary booth uh, on many occasions, so uh, we will be definitely rooting uh, for her. Yeah. And the first match is off. Damn. Yes, that's a great way to finish a rally. Straight kill. Are you know, I've already noticed she she bounces the ball very hard, like very sternly on the ground. Yes, does she do that to intimidate her opponent or does she is she just very strong? So like a Russian cultural thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Oh, and I must say, by the way, that um, we have, I've mentioned now twice, Ayuna is Russian, the world is in flames, and it has something to do with uh, Russia, but I have seen Ayuna on a couple of PSA tournaments where she's just a, uh, a regular uh, like spectator, Yeah. and she's uh, actually great friends with a uh, Ukrainian player who uh, also plays a couple of, played a couple of these tournaments. I yeah. don't know his name, but uh, Andre Vorlicek or something. Okay. So, the, 
the Russians and the Ukrainians on the sports court, they are uh, good friends. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, try and, and see that as hope. Yeah. yeah. Everything everything always starts in the squash court. That's true. Every broker to be. Uh, Both ladies are quite evenly matched in this start of the first game. Yeah. off a bit more than she could shoot there. Yes, quite unnecessary. And I will say though, I've seen uh, the other matches Victoria played as well. And she's a player that she chooses safety over uh, yeah, over the best option. I think a lot of times she has good possibility to just kill the ball, but she keeps it to the back. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Better safe than sorry, though. Exactly. That, that's her, her style. Better safe than sorry. A little lead now. Two point lead. Very important. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Questionable choice there. Yeah, she'll be kicking herself probably after not asking for that stroke. Yeah, rush and blood to the head. <laughs> uh, one of mine. So a small advantage in the game turns into a pretty comfortable advantage. Yeah, just like that. Some, some gnarly cross court low cut balls. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan Power. She reminds me of Jonathan Power. Oh wow, that's one of my favorite squash players of all time. <laughs> yeah, so is mine. Ayuna a might be my one of my newest favorite squash players of all time. One of your newest favorite squash players of all time. Well, it's the first time I've watched her play, so if she keeps those, those cross kills going, she should be up there. Shibana also had those balls. Yeah, yeah. Shibana, Jonathan Power, and Ayuna. <laughs> it's like, like, like Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal. Yeah, yeah. Matt Rushmore, like. <laughs> Ooh. In France. Victoria does have a, a nice boast on it. Like she she does throw in the boasts, even though you said she's majorly cautious. True. But usually a boast is is it's like a it's a shot that people use when they don't like really like don't ha don't like playing with much touch and finesse. Like they just bang it into the sidewall because it goes short. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and that's where. Uh, now I understand that you're totally wrong. A boast is not meant to play, to be played hard. Well, you play it softly. You play it with with touch, with feeling. I do it all the time. It works. Yeah. Disguise it. Disguise it as a as a length ball. You have yeah. a lot to learn, man. Beautiful length. So eleven six. six. That's actually a quite decent uh, performance. Yeah. With uh, the, the s better safe than sorry tactics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely no points in her um, trying to change anything. I think like it's, it's working. So better safe than sorry is the mantra for tonight. I think so, yeah. Of course. We're going to treat you to a nice rendition of some music now. Um, yeah, Would well, you know who the author of this like 
I have no idea. Do you do it now? Um, you must be going to all the Amsterdam dance event stuff. Yeah, but I don't think I'd be going the, to this. Like, I think maybe a computer made this. It's, it's, it's like one of the things. It's like uh, what's it called? Non-royalty music, royalty-free. Probably. I'm not in this kind of music at all. So. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I couldn't it, tell it's you. It's a bit like wallpaper music. But. Wallpaper music, yes. Yeah. Oh, but players get on court, so the wallpaper music. They must have heard the music. <laughs> Wanted to stop. Music that urges you back on court. Players back on court. Not how a unit would have liked to start this game. By the way, that Victoria does not really run a lot. She no. mainly strolls. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's like a cat. Exactly. Sometimes some quick steps to the front, like just now. Yeah. She's very good. She has a very good length. Though. True. Ba her basic game is very strong. Yeah, she, she has a good plan. I think she does it all the time. Yeah. She's good at it. Not her first rodeo. Yeah. Ooh. Um, yeah, I think I think Ayuna is under under quite some pressure. Yeah. Making uh, more mistakes than oh, nice party time. <laughs> exactly party time. Out of nothing, changing the concept of the. Better safe than sorry, into party time. Yeah. Damn. Vicious, vicious kill. Making great use of the body. Sending Yuna the total wrong direction. She might want to give her some uber fare t for, uh, with that shot. Yeah. Yeah. Double bounce. Taxis are expensive here. I know. Especially around these hours. Yeah, Evening yeah. hours, Friday. You always have to You're pay like 60% extra. Yeah. Fair. I think the romance of, of ta taking the taxi is kind of dead. In Amsterdam it is. But you had like... At one point you had a... Uh, taxi monopoly and then they took away that system and then it came like became an open market yeah and then it was war yeah, yeah yeah there were like several taxi companies but now you have uber yeah exploiting people yeah I in, uh, in ireland actually uber is not a you know actually allowed to use uber Ireland, you're yeah. not about uh, allowed to use Uber. Well, you're allowed to use it, but it doesn't. They don't have it. Like it's not like it's like <laughs> it's not like it's like a, a dictatorship where you can't use Uber. There just isn't an option for it. No drivers are just no app. Well, like you can you can book an Uber, but it's just having the taxi. Like like it's a real taxi. Ah, okay. So it's like they just didn't let like you have to be a real registered taxi guy or Clear. girl, of course. Oh, that was nice. I think I think she wanted to show herself about taxis. <laughs> that that that's a very important 
phase in the match where one player hits the nick shot perfectly and the other one wants to return the favor yeah. but fails. Yeah, it's like confirming your your the lesser player. Faith, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's 11-4. Uh, it's even uh, even bigger than the 11-6 of the first game. Yeah, two two love. What are we gonna? What are you gonna make of this? Um, I think it'll be. It was so. It's the first two games: eleven six, eleven four. Yeah. I think this one will be eleven. Um, actually, you know what? Sixteen fourteen. Sixteen fourteen to Victoria. <laughs> Might as well. We have all night. Like. We have all night indeed. Court's booked for the whole night. Okay, I will go with 11-5. Yeah, just to get it in the middle. Well, Goldilocks. you know, when I play you, I think you're a slightly a better player. But my goal with playing somebody who's better is like, get over that halfway point. Yeah. If, if it's 6, it's success. If it's 5, I failed. Yeah. So, and at this point I would say, especially because I root for Franz Otten a little bit. Well, a little bit a lot. Yeah. I would say keep Yuna below that halfway point. So an average of a maximum of five. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. For especially for the squash levels. Especially for the squash levels as well. But they're, they're always watching. That's true. Um, but Victoria's not on squash levels. I sh so. She should though, because they, no. they, they take uh, Victoria the squash is on that. Victoria is a special uh, sort of squash yeah. player. Like an enigma. Yeah. And Franz Otten didn't find Victoria. Victoria found Franz Otten by accident and uh, she just stuck around and appeared to be a hell of a player. Yeah, I remember she played the PSA tournament. And oh! Nice wrist move there. Yeah, I, c I can see that again. Yeah, well she was indeed playing the PSA tournament. Yeah, she came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere, unseated, semi-final. And she just missed it by uh, by nothing. Yeah, yeah. By a whisker. By a whisker, that's what I was looking for. Nice to see that she's wrapping Prince. Just stayed in. Keep putting pressure to the back there. Uh, too tight. Four love. Four love. Oh, uh, very nice touch there in the yeah. right front corner. Five love, so that 16-14 seems to be a mile away, Scott. Yeah, well, you know what they say, it's not over to the fat lady sings. That's true. So un until Shearer starts singing. You know where that comes from? It ain't over till the fat lady sings. It's from the opera, isn't it? Yes, it's from the opera. Yeah. I am a man of culture, even though I'm young, I, I'm beyond my years in culture. So it appears. But it's always the, the lady who sings the aria in the end of the opera, and after that it's, uh, it's done. Yeah. And the ladies with uh, the best voices appeared to be heavier. Yeah. So that's uh, fat for sure. Yeah. Easy let. Yeah. Well, let, let's not judge it too much, but I think the ball is a little bit out of reach. Yeah. I mean, I, ho I hope the ref's getting the calls right because we got him an extra cushion. Exactly. So he has no excuse. <laughs> and a cappuccino. Yeah, we made the ref feel at home. Yeah, we always do it. Oh, and again. We always make everyone feel at home if friends are in the stadium. If you ever come down. If you find it's cold or it's raining, just come on down. 
And there's always people around. Yeah. Every level. That you're always at the bar as well, Daniel. Yes. Well, 9-2, Scotty. I think the fat lady is just warming up her, her vocal cords. Oh, yes, why not? Yeah. Just do it. That, that would be a great slogan. <laughs> yeah, some, some international sports brands should use it. Yeah. Seriously. I don't know where you came about. Which came up with that. Like a lot of the best ideas, it just came to mind. Oh. It was an accident. Yeah. And we're done. 11-6, 11-4, 11-2. 11-2 would have been my second guess after the 11-5. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it once more for Anna. So, three love up for Franz Otten, and let's get to the court and let's hear what Chanel has to say. And Victoria. Congratulations, Victoria. This is your third year of the match. Three wins. Definitely feels good to be playing at home as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. When you're playing on this court, you know, we spoke a little bit about the temperature being a little bit cold to start with, and then it's heating up as we go. What's your mentality or game plan in that first game, especially as you're getting warmer and uh, getting more used to the court too? Well, personally, I just hit my way out of it. That's my style. Uh, that's, the, that's the best way for me to get warm. Uh, but yeah, definitely after the first set, I was feeling a lot more. Absolutely. Well,
Yes, welcome back everybody. Daniel and Scott is still from the commentator booth coming live from Franz Otten for you. Next on court, as Chanel explained, is the number one match between Danique Kukert and Eva Vertekova. Danique in the black shirt, Eva in the soon to be green shirt. And uh, what can you tell me about this, uh, these two ladies, Scott? Well, um, I'm not 100% uh, sure. I, I know, I think I might have seen Ava a couple of times at the Irish Open in, when I was younger, back in the day. Uh, and I heard that she's retired now, so she still just, she just loves the game, you know what I'm saying? I think she retired recently, so there yeah. should be uh, a couple of miles left in the legs. Exactly. And the pressure is off, so she might yeah. even play better than she ever yeah. thought she would play. And then Danique, I know she's quite a good junior, or she was, I don't know if she's still a junior. Well, she last weekend she, was, uh, she became the number three in the girls under 23 Dutch championships. Yeah. I think she kind of started a little bit late, but um, she seems to be in top four. Yeah, I, I remember her from juniors in fairness, like, but to be honest, I we never crossed paths. I know her brother Dennis, by the way. He, uh, he joined yeah. us for some commenting uh, every now and then. Yeah, Speedy Gonzalez. Exactly, Speedy Gonzalez. I played competition against him last Friday. Well, I I was not playing. I was yeah. just spectating. Yeah. But he was playing. Um, Kuhn from our team. Oh, how did it go? Kuhn won three love. Oh, really? I, I, I was coaching, so that's like the edge that Kuhn had over Dennis, I think. Yeah. Just Kuhn's, uh, shout out to Kuhn. Yeah, he's, uh, did you know he is uh, the runner up in the World Championships of Racketlon? Oh, really? Yeah. I knew he was like the top 20 in the world. I didn't know he got to the final. Yeah, last year, year he did, and he said he was he had a chance, but uh, yeah, he just lost because the other guy was a, a little bit better. But maybe next year. Yeah. Well, Franz Otten is in a pretty comfortable lead at this point. Three games to love. But in the end, it's always important. You have to win two out of three matches. Yeah. Because there's the, the, the possibility that you win 3-2 in two matches or lose 3-2 in two matches. Yeah. Um, and that you win one with three love. Then you will have more games on your opponent. But Um, but what so win, winning matches is, is what counts in my yes, opinion a, no it, it is it's just for the points <laughs> what did you think of the, the ref in the last match Tom uh, there, w there weren't very many decisions, if I recall correctly. I think there was one, but it was a simple let. Simple let. In, a, in Ireland, we say simple let Joe. Simple let Joe. Yeah, because uh, because the most um. famous referee in Ireland and one of the most famous referees in the world is uh, Joe Ruddy. Oh, He's Irish. okay. And uh, Derek Ryan, who you might know, he's. One, one of the best ever Irish players. Yeah. Um, he got to number seven in the world. Great player. So uh, he's your predecessor? Yeah, he's my predecessor, yeah. And he's then... You're going to be the Ireland's greatest yeah, player of number all Number six, yeah, yeah. <laughs> world champion. Yeah. But anyway, he al he was... He always... He loves it, like a dialogue with Joe. So every single... Every single decision, he'd say, simple that, Joe. 
<laughs> and uh, he had a, he had a, a skill of winding up the referees and the other player. Uh, he was a, a clever. He was a bit of a fox, a clever fox. Yeah, I know. You've told me uh, much about him, and I've seen him play at the World Masters. He mm. like wins every year. Yeah, he wins some category over. Last yeah. time it was over fifties, I think. Was yeah. he was he talking to the refs at all, or was he quiet as a mouse? He was not talking too much to the refs. I think. I think he. Um, in his in his older years, he's calmed down. But he calmed down a little bit. Would you beat him? I've never beaten him. No. Actually, I when I was 15, I uh, the crowd's going wild here. Uh, yeah, when I was 15 or 16, I played him and it was one all. And then I played in the third game, I bageled him. Oh, that's nice. And I I couldn't believe it. Like I was like I fucking sorry. I bageled the uh, Derek Ryan like, and then. What did he do? The next? I knew he was really pissed. And then, I, then he, what, what happened in the next game? He bailed me. <laughs> that sounds like an epic match. But let's yeah. get on to to the epic match of tonight. Yeah. Where uh, I think the, the the first rally. It shows the difference in there's a bit of a jump in class. Exactly. But I think we're in for a uh, for a small treat this match. Yeah. A lot of power in both women. Well what, played what both. What do you think of those Nike bandanas, the stretchy ones? So, uh, they're very popular in tennis, like Federer has them, isn't he? Or is, is Nadal? Or, are, are they still going, Nadal and Federer? No, no, Federer quit. He's gone. Right. He's gone. Yeah. By time. Well, he retired. Yeah, yeah. But he did not quit. He's no. Not a quit. No, but I must say, I, I have never heard of these stretchy headbands. Well, you can see, Andy has them, Andy with us. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if he's spending his Wednesday evening in Guatemala watching this. Or Nicaragua, I think it was. Uh, Nicaragua now. She's, Ava's very fair, she's, she's calling all her shots then. Yeah, she's no, not a professional anymore. Yeah. No, she's, she's calm. Yeah. Yeah, she's getting paid regardless, so it's not about winning. Oh, that one went out of court. Yeah, I think I heard a cat, a cat scream. <laughs> well, I, actually, I was uh, looking this match up. Uh, oh. Fault service. You cannot do that at this yeah. level. This is Eredivisie. You're in the number one spot. No. Keep the ball below the line with the serve. Yeah. You, that's a uh, amateur. It's amateur. Yeah. No, but I was uh, busy saying that I watched this. I looked this match up at um, at squash levels, and actually, squash levels believes that Danik is going to win this match with three one. Really. If you would have asked me prior to um, to this match without consulting squash levels, yeah, I would have said that the Nick would lose three love or maybe three one. Yeah. But squash levels is my conscience. It is my uh, decision making. Your bible. So it's my bible. I live by squash levels now. Tight drop there. You do, you do like numbers, don't you? I like numbers and I like odds and percentages. Yeah. And you know, it's got to add up. Algorithms. The 80 20. Were you the 80 20 or was that Andres? Uh, no, that was me. <laughs> I live by the 80 20 principle. Which basically, basically come down to, comes down to 80% of the work, 20% of the outcome, and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. 
would you say? Um, what? Where would you say you learned the eighty twenty philosophy? In a book called the eighty twenty principle. Oh, is it an actual book? It's an actual book. Is it more than one paragraph? Just it's, explaining it's what like, it is. It's like between two hundred fifty and three hundred pages. Jesus. <laughs> How do they stretch that out? Well, you should read it. You know, maybe I have that in English. And yeah. Then, and then I can, like... <laughs> well, then I, I can give it to you, borrow it to you. Yeah, yeah. But I would want it back then. <laughs> uh, yeah. Considering oh, that... Oh, beautiful boat. Yeah. We were talking about the boats a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. But that's how you play it. This is yeah. how you play it. And we have an 11-3. Yeah, that was flying. That went. That flew past. Um, we barely even got through the, the book conversation. <laughs> exactly. Now do you may you maybe understand that why the the book is like 300 pages. Yeah. Time flies. There's <laughs> so, too too little time to have so much information shared. Yeah. No. So like I mean, you can explain the 80-20 philosophy in like. A tweet, like like thirty characters. You could do, or something. yeah. No, one hundred forty. Oh, don't okay. you have Twitter? I do, but I don't use it. Like you're that. like you're like twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, yeah. It's for older people, like. Oh yeah. Okay. Like uh, now, like, Elon Musk bought Twitter, so. Yeah, it's gonna get crazy. I think. I don't really follow like all that stuff. I'm more. Uh, yeah. I'm more into video games, football. Have you ever played the squash video game on the Wii? No, but I've, I've heard that you you play you play every night, don't you? No, no, no. Before well, you go to bed. We, we have it. Well, my girlfriend and I, uh, we have it at home. We bought it. And I have never beaten her on the Wii because I think like a squash player and not like a Wii player. Yeah. And uh, what would you say with squash levels? What would they say about you playing your girlfriend in... Match. That's going to be a three love with uh, maybe one or two points a game. So I'm a little bit better than her. Yeah. She's good though. Yeah, very good. She improves a lot. I think she is about the level of uh, Ayuna, who played here oh, in the yeah. number three match. Only my girlfriend does not play Eredivisie yet. Yeah. She's working on it. Maybe it's uh, well, maybe maybe I'm working on it and she doesn't know it, but Yeah. I'm still trying to get my girlfriend to come to the ladies' night. Ooh, there was a very very nice boat by Denise, but very well countered by Ava. Yeah. A little bit lucky maybe that she was just in time. Uh yeah, she has a killer boast. Gold Ripper. Oh. oh. Oh my god, second Jesus. second full serve. Fill me once, shame on you. Fill me twice. <laughs> shame on me. What's that? Is it like a nursery rhyme? <laughs> yeah, it's um I think, I don't know, it's an expression or maybe it's like part of a song, I don't know. Something involved with culture. Of course, a cultural, cultural guy like you would know. <laughs> yeah. Precise. Oh, nice. Oh, textbook. That's straight out of the, the Jonah Barnes and how to play squash textbook. From you know, I have this like squash rule book from way back, I think in the 1970s, and it actually speaks of the second serve. Oh really? Yeah. So there was like, the points were going to nine. Yeah. First you had to win the rally, then you could, after that you could make points, but there was yeah. a second serve involved. Yeah. Hilarious. I, do you remember playing up to nine? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I remember as well. I just I just got in. I snuck in playing like junior tournaments. I think I started playing under 11s when I was 7. And I remember I had to it changed when I was like 8 years old. 
and I had to play up to 11 and I lost the match of, as you do if you're like 8 playing under 11 and I was blaming the score I remember saying yeah I, I just can't get used to the 11 <laughs> as an 8 year old but wasn't, wasn't there a, an in between step to 50? I think that it was 9 and then for like PSA it was 15 or at least like good, oh, turn, nice good players but like for amateurs and juniors I think it was still 9 And then they did the universal shift. So Denise feeling the pressure. There's a lot of pressure on feeling Denise. Feeling the pressure. So starting from this, that wicked lob serve already. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. She gives the ball a good whack anyway. Yeah, she does, but it's a little bit unfair because <coughs> the way that squash levels works, if squash levels predicts that player A beats player B, but player B beats player A, then uh, the losing player will go down a, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, a correct system, but since we're just starting with the whole squash levels thing, yeah. Danique is now very unlucky to, yeah. to come across Eva Vertikova, who was a, like a uh, former number 92 in the world. Yeah. So she will like drop yeah. very deep after this loss, probably. Yeah. It's like um, yeah. You if if you're high high enough in squash levels and you're like you wouldn't want to meet Ava in a dark alley. No. Exactly. You would go around the block. Yeah. So, 11-3, 11-4. Yeah. I think this is a pretty clear uh, outcome of the match. Yeah, I think also the the experience is... Like, she's, uh, she's not given Danique an inch. No. She's not letting her into the game at all. No, there's a lot of uh, aggression in her attacking. Yeah. And a lot of sharpness as well, I must say. Yeah. I'm actually, this is, I think, the, the sixth match of the, the first, no, the fifth match of the first half of the season. I did not see uh, Ava play yet, but she is a uh, yeah. good player. I'm pretty happy with the team we have here, actually. Yeah, a yeah. A lot of good players. Alexandra Fuller, have you seen her play? Yeah, yeah, she, she um, it's also wicked. played in my club. She's like trains in Dublin a bit. So. She, she's really moving up the world rankings as well, I think. She yeah. plays all those big tournaments. Yeah, yeah. I, she had a very good match with the uh, Scottish girl, didn't she? In the first match or something. Which, which Scottish girl was that? Aiken? Aiken? Lisa Aitken. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought she was Irish, but uh, I don't want to insult uh, any, anybody. Yeah. So let's see what one of the greatest inspirational speakers in in Netherlands, Tony Schwab, can do to muster up Danique's. Oh, I thought Sheward was going to go and say something to her. He probably, he probably, he probably gave her some trash talk. <laughs> Sheward's one of the. He's part of the Friends Out and Faithful. Season ticket holder. He is. No, but it's very nice to see that for our ladies team, they um, they are performing so well. This year we have a men's Premier League and ladies Premier League yeah. for the first time ever. Double trouble. Double trouble, and uh, the ladies team. Uh, if this match, if this last game goes like the previous two. Yeah. We'll uh, end the first half as season leader, which yeah. is quite uh, the achievement. Oh, nice. Start's very important for Danique. If she can't get in there, I just can't see a way through, to be honest. If she, if she sees herself three or four, look down again. I can, I can imagine that Danique is in the point that she doesn't really believe in winning anymore. Yeah. And it but won't if she gets a, like a little grasp yeah, of a it. a little smell.
Have you, are you familiar with the cartoon, The Adventures of Tintin? Yes, you know, we call him Kuifje, but I do, I do know him with his dog, Bobby. It's a Belgian guy. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can incorporate that with some squash. Because if you enlighten me, I do not know where you're going right now. Well, if you keep hitting the tin, <laughs> you can call. You could just say to the player, "Where's Bobby?" <laughs> A little far fetched, but I, I do think we're onto something. I, I, yeah, I, maybe I grabbed it out of thin air, but too much there. But I just I can't I can't control my creative juices. <laughs> So, Danik came back to all, and then Ava won a point, so now it's 3 2. Yeah, just well. to catch you up if, you're, uh, if you have eyesight problems. Oh, there's not. But what I, what I do notice is that in the beginning of the game, it's quite even until 3. And then yeah. Ava pulls is away. Like the cream always explodes. floats to the top. Exactly. Like, like the Guinness, the white part always is at the top in Guinness. Oh, that was a very sweet drop shot. Yeah. I think it was down, but... Well, I mean, I, I mean, uh, just the next sure. ball was probably down, but just yeah. making sure. Yeah. Don't want to leave it to chance. You never want to leave it up to the refs. Exactly. In, a, in any sport. Got to play the whistle. Oh. oh. Maybe this is the look she needs. Who knows? Is that also the fact with rugby, by the way? Like leaving it up to the refs, it's no good. Um, well, you gotta play. You can't just stop and like assume the ref. Yeah, no, the guy. Like if if the ref doesn't stop, the the players aren't gonna stop. They're not that much of gentlemen. What what would the sport be where if you made a mistake, you'd stop? Like that's the etiquette. Like it's in squash. Yeah, some people do, but it's not a it's not I, a universal. I would say rugby for some reason. There's some dirty uh, dirty little boogers in, in rugby though. Yeah, because it's quite aggressive, I can understand that. But yeah. No, but they're, they're very respectful for the refs, but I wouldn't say it's a universal thing that if you drop the ball, you're just going to stop. Or you're going yeah, to... You're gonna it's also tough as a team sport. I remember I was playing field hockey in in high school, and uh, I was used to like I was brought up. I'm a good, I'm a good Protestant Irish boy, like so. I was brought up if if you made a mistake, just you have to you can't lie or cheat. Same as squash, like if if you have double bench, just stop. So <laughs> I was it, the ball isn't allowed to hit your foot in hockey. True, it's called a shoot. Yeah. By the way, we are at seven all now, so <laughs> yeah. it's, it's getting kind of spicy here. Well, anyway, let me finish my story. So, <laughs> basically, I it hit my foot, and then, and then the coach, I stopped naturally, entirely, and then the uh, the coach went crazy at me. Eight seven to the knee. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause your story for a no, little no, while no, no. because uh, things I'm are spicing up here at the at the court. Yeah, I, I'm actually beginning to get enthralled again. This is very exciting. Oh. Nine seven. Chop, chop three. Now, well, this is just what the Nick needs, like a little wimp of yeah, yeah, of being able to beat Ava. Yeah, and then maybe it, it can, everything can change. 10-7. Oh my god. Game ball. Well, what did what did coach Tony say? Never underestimate. No, I don't. 
11-7 to the knee curve. Kind of turning it around from here. Yeah, turntables. That's quite uh, unexpected. Unexpected but true. Unexpected but true, but what happened there? Um, just as we said, if she gets a whiff, then she's, she's capable to, to beat her. Like It's just that I guess she didn't get into the game initially and then she just was... Because I think she was down like seven, 6 or 7-3. And then it was long yeah. one, one long stretch from, from 3 to 11. Yeah, well, you know the, the classic sports psychological phenomenon where if you see the finish line, you get distracted True. a bit. Could be. And although Ava's very experienced, nobody's perfect. That's also true. Let's keep that in mind, that nobody is perfect. Yeah. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. So if, if anyone out there tonight is feels bad about something they did today, or even in, in recent past, just remember that, like, yeah, everyone makes mistakes. No. It's always more important to take ownership of your mistakes. Yeah, yeah. And Come but forth with it. That's why I stopped when the hockey ball hit my foot. Exactly. But my, obviously my under 14 hockey coach took it so serious to try and train and breed cheaters. You know who also doesn't, well in my, in my experience, did not cheat? Ronaldinho or Messi. Yeah. Like the greatest of the greatest, they don't cheat. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about Messi anyway. Why? Are you not a believer? Well, I was then. See who, what mo he's taken a lot of money from a lot of questionable people. Okay. Sadly, uh, Raves. I don't know. He's the, he's the new ambassador for Saudi Arabia. Ah, uh, okay. I did not know that. So, starting so, off with a pretty spicy rally here. Yeah. Ending the rally with the jazz hands. Could have gone both ways. That's an, an amazing vintage serve. I haven't, it, it's kind of gone out of fashion, the lob serve. I know, I've... Uh, I've been using it lately as well. Yeah. It's handy, like, especially to switch it up. Um. Yeah. Oh. Uh. That's three love. Three one. Was three one or three love? I think it's three now, yeah, three love. Yeah, it says on the big screen, but I thought I heard the ref say 3-1. Do you know the origin of, of the word love? I think it's love, like in laughing. No, no. I think that's what tennis... Uh, because you have zero points, so everyone's laughing at you? Yeah, exactly. No. Do you want to know what the truth I is? I want to know, yes. It is... Um, French for an egg. Love. That's true. So that's why they started talking. They, they started saying love because it looked like an egg. So again, it, it's the French who decided how to do this. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Oh. Well, we have a French uh, lady in the in the women's team. I think Marie Stefan. Oh yeah, yeah. We might have to ask her to confirm. We uh, we will ask her to confirm indeed. If she's watching. Bonjour. Bonjour. Or bonsoir. <laughs> I knew you know your way around the world. Uh, and I've noticed French, English, Dutch. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? I have a few German w words. Yeah, but they sound aggressive. Yeah, I think the, f the funny thing is when you say that to Germans, they they're like, no, it's a nice language. Like, they must be nuts. Like, delusional. Anyway, <laughs> sorry to if I offended any Germans, but uh, yeah, 
Well, maybe by calling them germs, you, know, <laughs> you offend them. And I, uh, I'm not backing that. Well, eight one. For the Germans out there, you could call this the end score. The end score. Oh, that's very, good. very, um, very good. Yeah. I mean, as a Dutch, I understand all the German. Yeah, no, I, I know my way around a lot of languages. Not just a pretty face. So I've seen what I noticed uh, in the corner of my eye was that Ava was, she's going short a lot more. And that's where she's getting the reward because she just takes all the momentum out of the game. Takes, takes the sauce off the ball. And her feet got a little bit quicker. Yeah, yeah. So, 11-1. So, and she uh, she rectified her 11-7 thing and, and showed Danique who's boss. Showed the whole stadium who's boss. Yeah, this was good. I think for a first match. Oh, let's uh, get to the court. Let's get to Chanel, team manager. Yeah. So, off to the final match, Scotty. Yeah. Dagmar Vermeulen against Suzanne Peters. Yeah, Susie P. Properly introduced by Chanel, yeah. team manager. Successful team manager, if I uh, may say so. Yeah, I think the best team manager in France, Alden. Even better than I am? Uh, oh, I'm my talking God. about the air that is team managers. <laughs> No, I'm not a team manager. I'm, I'm, I'm a simple team captain. Yeah, El Capitano. El Capitano. And as I said before, this is going to be a spicy match. Yeah, a cracker extravaga extravaganza. Yeah, and I, I would like to warn you not to underestimate uh, Dagmar. 
she is uh, 45 plus, but very capable of, uh, of playing playing the game. She's been around for many many years. She's done. She has covered almost all the aspects of the the, the squash scene in Holland. Recently, sort of retired in a very emotional Facebook message uh, from Squash Volle, uh, where she's was has, has been working and and playing for uh, for decades, I think, and now playing for Squash Almere. Why did she retire from Zwolle? Well, I don't know. Maybe I will ask her tonight, but her voice is gone, so she cannot talk. Okay. But uh, Squash Wolle recently changed venue. The, the old venue was too old, closed it down, and they are now in a full new uh, environment with glass court, and uh, it's all more, more modern. And I think that, that changes the dynamics a little bit. But that's just a, a hunch, yeah. a, a gut feeling. But still, she did not retire from squash. Let's make sure of that. She's on court. She's uh, she loves the sport. Yeah. And she's uh, she has played for the Dutch team. I think she played World Championships or European Championships. So. Yeah. She reminds me of a female Lucas Bout. In what uh, what sense? Hair uh, color. Cast cap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just like the vintage Dutch. Yeah, I think she's a vintage Dutch northern person. Oh, okay, right. I mean, here in Amsterdam we don't have Dutch people anymore. We just have international people, of course. Yeah, like me. Like you. But uh, up in the north of the country, it's all Frisian. They're, in Friesland they have their own language. Yeah. Freeze. Freeze indeed. And I, as a Dutchman, I cannot understand that. I can understand German pretty easily. Not freeze. Yeah. Gibberish. It sounds like gibberish, yes. Do you, do you have an example or would you not even engage? In well, that? I know we had this famous uh, weather guy in Holland. Piet Palersma, he recently passed away. God yeah. have his soul. Um, but he would always end his... Um, is uh, weather forecast with und moon and that's something like have a nice day yeah simplify und moon yeah so that's um, yeah it sounds kind of like nordic it i think there's a link between the the the, the frisians and the nordics yeah name name a more iconic duo sorry name a more iconic duo than Frisians and Nordics. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. But this is a... Oh! That was a very nice behind-the-back drop shot. And that's only during warm-up. Yeah. By the way, is she wearing that headband that you were talking about? Like the elastic? Um, I think I think so, yeah. That could be a cotton one. But uh, I guess time will tell. Time. So, ref has called time. Toss has been made. Up for the final match, but let's uh, make it very clear that Franz Otten has already beaten Almere with yeah. a uh, with a two uh, two love victory until now. Dubs, and that Franz Otten is the like the Germans say it, Herbstmeister. So they are the the winter champs, which is a very great achievement. Let's uh, let's yeah. swing some kudos for Chanel over yeah. the web. She did a great job. Yeah, please, thanks. Thank you well.
So um, while we have a lull in the action, what is something that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, first of all, I would like to share that again. I have um, asked my Bible, Squash Levels, what, what should I think of this match? And Squash Levels clearly stated that Dagmar is going to win this uh, match 3-love. Oh, really? Yes, really. And um, what I have seen some great work by Suzanne uh, in her previous uh, matches. She's a real fighter. She can do it. She has yeah. strained her ankle a little bit. Last last week she made a very deep pickup, and then uh, she was startled a little bit as well. Now her ankle is in tape. It doesn't hurt, she said, but it, it's swollen. But she once had a uh, a sort of injury when she <coughs> tore a hamstring and an Achilles and a groin and everything at once. Oh wow! But like the the mother of all injuries. Yeah. Happened to Susanna, and then last week she thought she would have it again. So she's a little bit frightened, I think, to. Yeah, to go all the way, but she's always also a little bit <laughs> denied playing by Dagmar, who's like finishing everything like a pro. Yeah, yeah. Probably because of the headband. Yeah. So, Sess Ein, 6 1. Um, Sex Ein. Sex Ein. Um, Shay, Hain, Irish. Gaelic? Yeah, Irish. Oh, she, Suzanne just plucked one out of the sky. Doesn't She's using that racket like Nicholas Muller. Uh, that's, did you see that, that Mickey Muller move like the other the, the other day? Like a couple of days ago? Uh, no, no. Oh, well, I have but I can imagine. I can only imagine. I, can, I cannot describe how that went, but it was like an amazing yeah. sense of awareness for the ball. Oh yeah, he, I think he knows every square millimeter of the ball. I think so, and the court, in combination yeah. with the court as well. And the racket. So a slow start for Suzanne, but I, I have the feeling that she's catching on for just a little now. Yeah. Commentator's curse. Yeah, that's true. It happens all the time. We should refrain from saying those things. Beautiful Nick Ball. Yeah. Home advantage. True. There is a little bit of home advantage there. Yeah, but that's part of the fun. Oh, great shot. Nice. nice. Paparazzi is trying to get a shot of us. It, it's not very often where they, that you guys get a whole night of me talking. So no, that's true. That's true. Soak it in.
So 11-7 for this first game. Very slow start, start by Susanna, even a little bit frightened to my liking. Um, but I'm very glad to see her fight back towards the end. And uh, I hope that gives her just a, the enough belief that she, she can really make a difference this match as well, like she did in some previous matches. She has the home advantage. She has the people behind her cheering for her. So, um, Yeah, let's go Susanna. Get on court, kick Dagmar's ass. Flying out. Yeah, like a weapon. But this is the correct answer by Susanna Peters. Pump it in front of the court. Oh. Post there. Well, not yeah. only this one, but like the whole match. Yeah, she's, she's very, uh, very accurate. A very accurate. I think the the weak spot of Susanna is, is her length. She just needs more paces to get to the front of the court. Yeah, yeah. Dagmar knows it because, yeah, like I said earlier, she, is, uh, she used to be her trainer. I think right now Suzanne has been coached by Milou van der Heide. Great counter drop. Stay close now. Yeah. Staying close on the scoreboard always puts yeah. under pressure. Oh, oh yes, yeah. very nice fist bump. Thank God for the low tin. Exactly, thank God for the low, th low tin. It's good that you mention it. We have a 17-inch tin here. Yeah, beautiful state-of-the-art tin. Can't blame the tin for that. No, we can blame Susanna for that. That was a little bit overachieved. Ambitious, yeah. Ambitious. Wowzers. Again, it's like boast galore out there. Yeah, yeah. Six, seven. Five, seven, I think. Oh, five, seven, yeah. No worries. Six. No less. The ref's really being harsh. Setting the stall out, showing his boss. Ooh. Really stayed. Oh. oh! Perfect idea. Jesus. It would have been great. Very well done. Staying close. 7 8. Suzanne is ready to go. She's pumping in. Yeah, I think Suzanne just needs to avoid Dagmar's boast. Dagmar doesn't play the boast. She's in the money. She's in the green. Literally and figuratively. That's well put, Scott. 
yeah. because of the green color of her shirt yeah. and the fact that money in the United States is green. Yeah, and like in the green, golf wise, your rim profit, like yeah, 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 on the green, yeah, it's just green's usually a pretty positive color, unless you say you're green with envy. That's, That's true. not positive. No, are green like you're you're sick. Or something. And unfortunately for Vos, but uh, gladly for Almere, Dagmar has also taken the second game, but this one was. A little bit closer for Cole. Yeah. So, promises something for the rest of the match. <laughs> Suzanne has fought her way back, I think, from a two love down situation yeah. in competition. I would have to dig real deep in which match that was again, but uh, it will come to me. Yeah. But I think she found a way to. Uh, yeah, to, to exploit her her positive points, she only needs to be cautious for that boast, because the yeah. boast is, is deadly. Yeah. Dagmar seems not to need a rest, already on court. Yeah. So, Scott, do you think that uh, Suzanne is able to turn this around? I think she can. I mean, I think it's closer than the scoreline says, like 11 7, 11 8. You know, um, a two point swing either way, then, you know. Cool. Then it could be Suzanne with winning the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's hope so. Ah, uh, nice shot. Oh, even better. Oh, that's very unfortunate. Yeah. She was close. to correct myself uh, when Vos was playing Mir Squash, Suzanne was playing Elfie Marcus. Yeah. And then she was down 2-1. Oh, okay. Three, three. She won the first game, lost the two after that, and then she won two. Well, still impressive. Very impressive and shows some that she's capable of. Yes. Cat-like reaction there in mid-air. I don't know if she's wearing her Air Jordans right now. Yeah. But she kind of flew on that ball. Yeah. Have you ever went to see uh, any of those, like, um, basketball players play? <laughs> like in a basketball match? Yeah, like the best. Like, have you ever uh, went yeah, to see I've, I've Jordan? Been to, I've been, no, not Michael Jordan, but I've been to an NBA match in... Uh, I think it was the Philly 76ers. I, see, I went to see the Philly 76ers as well. Oh, nice. I didn't really like it, to be honest. Like, it was just like watching an ad for three hours. True. Okay, there's some confusion around the court. Yeah, commotion. Commotion? Yeah. Uh, lovely. That was a bit of a windmill, Dutch windmill action. True. Over and out. Oh. Again with it's the like boast. her um it's like there's a magnet just in front, just above the tin. Have you ever, have you ever seen um Space Jam? Yes, I have. Where they have with the magnet with the golf ball. Yeah. Going into the hole. Yeah, it's kind of like that with uh, with this. Like, it's, it's all. It, I wonder if Tony Schwab is behind the wall with Magnus. <laughs> Every time Tagmeier hits a boast. It's gonna be a let. What would you give 
I would give a let down. Yeah, I think it satisfies all parties. The best, a wise man once said the best call is a call that satisfies everyone. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, it's not that common, but yeah. Why doesn't she run for it? She could have had that. 7 5. This is absolutely crucial at this point. And again, the boast. I think I saw Suzanne smiling a bit about those boasts, even. Yeah, a wry smile. Oh. oh. Yes, add a little bit of luck, and there's where your points come from. Yeah, it's just checking whether it was. Hopefully, the racket didn't break. I think she was checking because those rackets aren't cheap. By the way, I was thinking that the ref can do whatever he likes against uh, against Dagmar because she lost her voice. She cannot talk. Yeah. So she cannot complain to the ref. Yeah, she's bound to silence. Maybe we should uh, we should take we should take everyone. Oh, right. We should take everyone. Everyone's voice, every squash player's voice, so they can't just dissent. Okay, it's getting interesting. Eight yeah. nine. I think if she can get this point, and it's out. Yes, you have it. Nine all. Come on, we, we want some more squash, don't we, folks? We need some more squash, but we need the points to, to be in favor of Suzanne at this point. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully. I thought there was going to be a boast. Oh! oh. Had all the chance. She's. Just put Dagmar on pole position for the win. Oh, she couldn't get it. Again the boast. Fair and square, Dagmar wins this one. 11-7-11-8-11-9. And... There was a little bit more in it maybe for Susanne, but eventually the experience of Dagmar. Okay, we're turning to uh, Chanel at this point. Yeah, the boss. Dagmar will keep it short. I know you don't have a voice at the moment, so I don't have to speak loudly into the microphone. This is going to be funny. Great win tonight for you. Some good, valuable points on the board. Your team's been doing really well this season. You've been an integral part of that as well. What's it like playing Belmira this season? Good to be back on court as well at Franz Hudson playing here. How did you find the court? How did you find the crowd playing in front of everyone here tonight? Well, when I entered the uh, Fox Open, I was thinking about the Dutch Nationals. Like 10 years, 15 years ago, that I played it, but I coached a lot. So, but I feel a little bit like a famous player into the front end. Definitely. Well, we're glad to have you back here. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, Dagmar Vermeulen. Well, that concludes our evening tonight with Franz Otten taking the win here 2 1 over Almera. Great to have them out here with us today. Have to give a big thank you to all our sponsors. It wouldn't be possible without them. So a big round of applause to everyone that's made this season possible. <laughs> of course, to the stream team as well. Thank you for being here tonight for live streaming music. And then a big thank you to Franz Sultan for their support of our busy team of squash and tennis, Fidel, of everything this amazing facility has. So uh, let's keep it up and uh, enjoy ourselves in the bar. Thanks, everyone. Yes, Scotty, that indeed concludes this evening yeah. of uh, high-level Premier League ladies squash. Yeah, squash to femme.
squash du femme in which Franz Otten came out as the victor and the Herbstmeister. Yeah. So uh, I think we have had a great night and uh, we will uh, we will give it a, a follow up at the bar with yeah. everybody who was here. Thanks everybody uh, for watching. Thank you, Scotty, for uh, for joining me again. It's always, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Um, and just for everybody looking at home, next week we do not have a match at Franz Otten Stadium, so no commentary. But our men's team is playing Ridderkerk away in Ridderkerk, and the lineups have not been uh, opened uh, yet. But I understand, Scott, that, you, that, that you're playing. So we have a we have a scoop here. Yeah. So you're Heard playing here first. Yeah. Perfect. That's very good to hear. Uh, we'll so be third if match. you want to see some Knicks ever in Redekirk on Wednesday, come on then. Well, we will definitely share the live stream in the older Franz Otten channels. And uh, the next ladies match will be in the New Year's uh, at 11, the 11th of January 2023. So Jesus. you have to... I'm getting older. Wait, Time's passing fast. Wait a little bit for that. But... Anyhow, everybody, thank you for watching, and we will definitely uh, see you next time. Yeah. And um, goodbye. Yeah, love you. Bye.